And when these three keys turn together, when governments, employers and workers are able to come together, doors open and social justice advances. The ILO is the only international organization in which governments and workers and employers' representatives have an equal voice in its decision-making. This concept is known as tripartism. Because of tripartism, the ILO can make use of real-world knowledge about employment and labor issues in its work. Since 1919, the ILO has responded to the needs of people everywhere for decent work, livelihoods and dignity. Who is the driving force behind the setting up of the ILO? Discover the story of the workers' group. Over a hundred years ago, the voice of workers was struggling to be heard. The Industrial Revolution had restructured the world of work and it provided great riches for the few and global dominance for a number of Western nations. The growing working class had to live daily with poverty, inequality and discrimination. It was usual to find children working in factories and fields. Workplace accidents and deaths increased with industrialization, mining and transport. Then came the war in 1914. The First World War left countries and economies in ruins. People were traumatized by the violence, and the voices of those who had worked behind the front lines were clamoring to be heard, and revolutions broke out. When the First World War finally came to an end in 1918, the disenchantment of the workers brought the whole of Europe to the brink of revolution. Workers demanded that the peace settlement should include measures to ensure fairer working conditions, promoted through international labor standards and trade union rights. The social situation was so explosive that one of the main concerns of the Paris Peace Conference was to deal with unrest so great that the peace and harmony of the world are imperiled. This statement opens the preamble to the ILO's constitution and sets the stage for the creation of a permanent tripartite organization for labor. The ILO, bringing together governments, workers and employers' representatives, was created in 1919 through Part 13 of the Versailles Peace Treaty to ensure peace by promoting social justice. A key actor of tripartism is the workers' group of the ILO governing body. Today, it has 33 members that are elected every three years by all worker delegates at the International Labour Conference. For a hundred years, the workers' group of the ILO governing body has defended the interests of workers across the world. The composition of the workers' group reflects regional and gender balance, as well as a mix of developed and developing countries. So, what are some of the major results of the workers at the ILO? 1919, Working Time Convention 1. The first international convention setting out maximum working hours and duration of the working day. 1920 to 2006, Maritime Conventions. The first protections for seafarers ensured their safe and decent working conditions. 1930 and 1957, Forced Labor Conventions, Conventions 29 and Convention 105 the first internationally enforced laws outlawing forced labor and slavery, 1948 and 1949, freedom of association and collective bargaining, the international standards protecting the rights of workers to join together in unions and collectively bargain their wages and working conditions, 1951 and 1958, equal remuneration and non-discrimination Conventions 100 and Conventions 111, ensuring the protection of workers from discrimination in the world of work and access to work as well as equal pay for work of equal value. 1952, Social Security Convention 102, setting out the international standard for social security floors including unemployment, invalidity, 
maternity and retirement benefits, among others. 1973, Minimum Age Convention 138. Based on standards since 1919, the convention set universal standards for minimum age for workers. 1973, Tripartite Consultations Convention 144, ensuring workers' representatives are consulted in the development of laws and all regulation which concern them. 1999, Worst Forms of Child Labor Convention 182, aiming to action to fully eradicate child labor around the world, especially all hazardous work. The voice of the workers' group has been critical during some of the most important historical moments of the ILO. Resistance to Nazism. In 1933, the workers' group refused the accreditation of the Nazi German workers' delegate, which led to Germany leaving the ILO. Decolonization. Workers' delegates contributed to the adoption of the Declaration of Philadelphia, which recalled that all human beings, irrespective of race, creed, or sex, have the right to pursue both their material well-being and their spiritual development in conditions of freedom and dignity, of economic security and equal opportunity. Struggle against the apartheid regime. Workers' delegates played an important role at the ILO in the combat against apartheid in South Africa. 1964, adoption of the Declaration on Apartheid. The International Labour Conference unanimously adopted the Declaration Concerning the Policy of Apartheid, condemning the South African government's racial policy, followed by a continuously updated action program. The workers' group especially supported the democratic trade unions of South Africa in their struggle and transition. And finally, the victory over apartheid came early 1990, after which Nelson Mandela attended the ILC, where he paid tribute to the ILO. The establishment of democracy in Poland. In 1980, shipyard workers in Poland went on strike for an independent trade union and respect of freedom of association. Workers' delegates played a key role in defending the rights of the trade union Solodinosk, led by Lech Walesa. A commission of inquiry concluded that Poland had violated the Freedom of Association Convention No. 87. 1982. The ILO gave its full support to the legitimacy of the Solardinosk Union, which launched the first independent, self-governing trade union in the then Eastern Bloc. This opened the door to the return of democracy. The end of the Cold War. The disintegration of the Soviet Union between 1990 and 1991 ends the Cold War. Globalization. In 2008, the ILO Declaration on Social Justice for a Fair Globalization is adopted. The declaration expresses the contemporary vision of the ILO mandate in the era of globalization. Today, the world of work is changing faster than ever before, and ensuring the voice of workers is heard is more important than ever. Strong unions are the safeguard of democracy. Many of the problems the world faces, from gross inequality to boom and bust economic cycles, can be alleviated by strong unions. As we look towards the future, we must remember that the future is not predetermined. Technology, demographics, or climate change alone will not decide our future. It's up to us to ensure we fight for the future of work that we want. We have a remarkable 100 years history of achievement. We live at a time of unprecedented, transformative change at work. With the vision of the ILO's founders, described by some as a wild dream of securing peace through social justice, it is surely not beyond our capacities to build the future of work that we want, a future with decent jobs for all.